so good to see you again. And today we're actually going to talk about something that's happening the whole month long, and that is Black History Month. So February is Black History Month in the United States, where we celebrate and learn and educate your, ourselves on Black history and Black culture in the country. Now, there's a lot of things that can be talked about during this month, and a lot of that is usually going to be taken care of in other subjects, but music does factor into Black history. In fact, it factors into all history. So I thought we'd use today to kind of do my little inclusion into a Black History Month discussion with a talk about one of the songs from uh, Black History and Black Culture, Lift Every Voice and Sing. So we're going to learn about that today. We'll talk a little about the history. We'll listen to the song. And then we'll hear a story uh, from one of my friends um, who, and we'll hear that story, which we'll be talking about how the song kind of played its way through history. So, to begin, we'll talk about the song, Lift Every Voice and Sing, which is often referred to as the Black National Anthem in the United States. This is a hymn written as a poem by James Weldon Johnson in 1900 and was set to music by his brother, J. Rosamond Johnson, for the anniversary of Abraham Lincoln's birthday in 1905. So there's already a lot of history right there, so I'm going to back up a little bit. Hopefully we all know who, Mer who Abraham Lincoln is. He's the dude on the right. He was our 16th president and he was president during the Civil War. And during the Civil War, he pushed through, a, um, he uh, made a push to have an amendment in the constitution made that freed all the slaves in the country, made it so that nobody would be a slave anymore. And that was obviously super important. Now this song, Lift Every Voice and Sing, was written as a poem first and then was turned into a hymn. A hymn is a type of song that you could think of as a poem to music and is usually used either in churches or religious services or just really important uh, events like that. So James Weldon Johnson and J. Rosamond Johnson worked together to write out the words and set it to music. And then they performed it um, for what would have been Abraham Lincoln's birthday in 1905. Obviously, Abraham Lincoln was already dead by that time, but it was a celebration for so Lift Every Voice and Sing is a song, you know, maybe celebrating Abraham Lincoln or just celebrating that event in Black history where for the first time in the country, you know, every Black citizen wasn't a slave. You know, they could be free. That was very important. So really quick, we're actually going to look at the words of the song. And it's very simple. It's a very short song. So let's look at the words. Let's, we'll read them together. Lift Every Voice and Sing till earth and heaven ring, ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies, let it resound as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun, let's march on till victory is won. Now let's stop and let's think about what they're saying this for a second. What do you think they're talking about when they're singing this song? What are some of the things when you were reading through it, or maybe you're thinking about it right now, what are some of the things you think they're trying to say with the song? Well, if we look at the beginning, this is, you know, lift every voice and sing. They want everybody to sing. That's usually a happy thing. Till earth and heaven ring, so sing a lot. Ring with the harmonies of liberty. So they're talking about liberty, justice, freedom, things like that. They want us to sing with those ideas. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. So again, rejoicing. We're very happy. We are singing with happiness so loud everyone and everything can hear us. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has, has taught us. So the past was dark, not very great, but people had faith. They had belief that things would get better. Uh, sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. So at the present time, there's hope. You know, they feel that things will get better. They feel that, you know, with a little bit of work, you know, things will get better. Uh, facing the rising sun of our new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. So we got to keep on going. It's a new day. Everything's brand new. We have hope. We have faith. Let's keep on going. So that's kind of what I, I think the song is about. You may think something different. It's all up to you. But that's kind of what I thought when I heard these words for the first time. So now we're going to listen to the song. Here we go. Let it 
All right. And that is the song right there. Lift every voice and sing. That is how the song sounds. I don't know. I think it's very uplifting. It's got a nice little, it's got a nice sound to it. It sounds very positive and things are moving forward. I kind of like it. All right. To end, we're going to listen to uh, my friend. Oops, let me pause the video. Uh, which is going to talk about how the song Lift Every Voice and Sing inspired generations. So it's kind of a little bit of a history lesson. It starts off with a young girl during the Civil War hearing the song, or actually not during the Civil War, during the time when the song was first written, so in 1905, and then seeing how progressive generations still use the song to inspire themselves to keep on going. Now, we're not going to do this whole video because there's a lot of talking at the end that isn't the story, but we'll get the story done. Here we go. How Lift Every Voice and Sing Inspired Generations. Written by Kelly Starling Lyons. Illustrated by Keith Mallett. Before you were born, a girl learned a song. Her principal, James Weldon Johnson, and his brother, John Rosamond Johnson, had written the hymn for a celebration of President Abraham Lincoln's birthday. I didn't know he was a principal. That's cool. He worked at school. The girl wanted to make them proud. She hummed the song on her way home from school. She practiced it as she did her chores. I think she's practicing. On the big day, February 12th, 1900, she was part of a choir 500 strong. Back straight, head high, heart and mouth open, she sang. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. Ring with the harmonies of liberty. Right. And she kept on singing as she grew up. She taught it to her students when she became a teacher. She crooned it to her husband as they journeyed from Jacksonville, Florida, to a new life in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. She sang it when she rocked her baby boy to sleep. It was a part of her she wanted to pass on. And you know what? Her little boy learned that song. He listened to her hum it as she dreamed of being able to teach again in her new home. He heard his daddy sing it when the days at the steel mill wore him down. Oh, that's exciting. He wants then to one day he stood in the choir loft and gazed at the glowing faces. Back straight, head high, heart and mouth open, he sang. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. And he kept on singing. He sang it when he came back from World War II and faced discrimination. He sang it when he joined the NAACP. He sang it to his wife and to his baby daughter as he rocked her to sleep. It was a part of him he wanted to pass on. And you know what? His little girl learned that song. She sang it each morning at school. Then came the day that broke the nation's heart. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was killed. The next morning, she saw her teacher cry. Sobs replaced singing. Then whimpers and silence. Who would lead them now? The song whispered an answer. Back straight, head high, heart and mouth open, she sang. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. And she kept on singing. She sang it at protests for equal rights and when she and her friends were jailed. She sang that song in her heart each time she won or lost a case as a lawyer. She, a lawyer. she sang it to her baby boy as she rocked him to sleep. It was a part of her she wanted to pass on. And you know what? Her little boy learned that song. Every family reunion opened with that anthem. He sang it because he had to at first, but then something changed. He saw the awe in his grandparents' faces, saw the pride in his mamas and pops. Back straight, head high, heart and mouth open, he sang. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. 
and he kept on singing. He sang it at his college graduation and when he opened his first business. He sang it at rallies to stand up against racism. He sang it holding his wife's hand at black history programs and when he rocked his daughter to sleep. It was a part of him he wanted to pass on. And you know what? His little girl learned that song. And on another big day, September 24th, 2016, she stood in a crowd of thousands along with her mama and daddy. President Obama, the first lady, and generations of one family rang the freedom bell. A dream born a century ago to honor black lives and contributions had finally come true. The National Museum of African American History and Culture was officially open. With the Washington Monument piercing the sky, that little girl stared at the bronze building majestic as a crown. As bells around the nation tolled in triumph, she heard a voice rising too. Clear and strong, it was a song she heard her parents sing. Back straight, head high, heart and mouth open, she sang. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. And you know what? That song is a part of you. Sing when you score a victory. Sing when tough times get you down. Sing and think of all the people who sang before you, who carried on and pushed forward even when everything was against them. Sing and remember they never stopped believing. Keep singing. Keep pushing. Keep passing it on. Keep on keeping on. All right. So we're good. We're going to pause it there since the rest of the video is a little less about the story. But I want you to look at this picture. Do you see how that one song tied all these kids together? We see them all the way back, going all the way back to 1900 through uh, World War II, they mentioned, through the 1960s, all the way up to today. All of them singing that song, all of them sharing the message. And there's a lot of things in that story that I hope you get to hear about during Black History Month. Um, you know, they mentioned, unfortunately, the discrimination that was happening after World War II. They mentioned the NAACP, uh, the Civil Rights Movement, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I know we talked about him a little bit. He's going to come up again, all the way up to the new uh, Black History Museum that had just opened. So all of this is very important, and I do hope that uh, you learn a little bit more about it as we go through the month, and that when you do, think back to this song and how it ties everything together. All right, well, that's all the time we have for today. I do seem to remember, I think we have some time off next week, so you might get a little bit of a break, but I'll hope you enjoy.